Today we're going to talk 520 horsepower, big sedans, design, curb appeal. Something tells me you guys are not going to be particularly surprised if we have to split up driving dynamics into three pieces. And those pieces are the engine, we've got 520 horsepower up there, the transmission, and then the overall handling. So before we geek out on tech specs here, let's step back and look at a little bit of history. It was back in 2013 that Audi, well, they broke the hearts of you guys, Audi fanboys, by ditching the 10-cylinder engine in this thing. And then number two, did you guys see our Audi RS5 film? Uh, in it, we drove kind of the last of a breed, which is an Audi with a naturally aspirated V8. In it, we determined that we can see why so many car companies are slapping turbos on larger engines like this. And this is proof of that hypothesis. Well, uh, look at this. It's 520 horsepower, comes in at 5,800 RPM. It's four liters, and it puts out 481 pound-feet of torque, comes in at a low 1,700 RPM. Now granted, not surprised at all that it comes in so low like we were with a GLA 45. Um, but what's really surprising here is two things. Number one, it's two turbochargers that put out 15.9 pounds of boost. And then you combine all of that, you've got a 4,685 pound car here. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of aluminum bits, but still it's almost 5,000 pounds. Putting all that engine geek tech stuff together, 3.9 seconds to 60. So let's start with the obvious. Uh, if you've got 520 horsepower pretty much in anything, it's going to pull you out of any mess. Like, let's take this declining radius turn here. I'm hitting it a little hard for an almost 5,000 pound car, but you want to come out of that thing aggressively, there, there, there's just there's no hesitation. I mean, 520 horsepower with twin turbos. Now, that's where you would think you'd have a problem because it would be like an on and off switch. There actually isn't an on and off switch in, in most of the Audi uh, V8 turbos. Basically, with the torque coming in so low, you get this wide power band. So, okay, now we're on straight and it just pulls like a freight train. Let's move one point down our driving dynamics checklist and move on to the transmission. So like most other Audis, or pretty much every S Audi, uh, you've got uh, paddle shifts, and this is connected to the eight-speed S-Tronic. So you can obviously do two ways, like I'm going to sport mode right now, uh, and the car is doing all the shifting for us. Now, that's great, right? And then you can shift it on your own. Like for example, I can use the uh, paddle shifts, I can select my own gears. Now let's go through a couple of nice turns up here. I'd like to point out this is a 5,000 pound car we're throwing around canyons. Um, and I'm holding the car in what, third gear right now? Uh, and let's say I want to downshift into two here. It actually lets me, that lets me do most of what I want. There's never been an instance where I've drive this thing and it decides it, it, it's going to deny a shift. Um, but I've got to tell you, I've tested this a couple ways back to back and it, in most instances, the S mode is spot on to what I, what gear I would choose, which I gotta say, there it's very rare that I've seen one of these transmissions, whether it's this, the Mercedes, or others, that will select the gear that I want to select. So this is an unusual case where you actually can put it in drive or S and just let the car do the driving for you. So if you are a fan of the Audi A8 range, you know two things. Uh, number one, the 2015 model year brought about a couple of changes. Uh, and number two, on the A8 side of things, you can get the car in pretty much any length and engine combination you want. Where on the S8 side of things, eh, let's just call it a, a standalone beast. But there are two instances where the S8 follows along on the A8 side. Um, let's unpack it. Number one, the length of the car. Uh, you can have an A8 spec in 117 inch wheelbase or 122 inch wheelbase. This is anything you want as long as it's a 117 inch wheelbase. Uh, now, there is a W12 motor that is on offer on the A8 side. That 
shares its brakes with the S8. 15.7 inch diameter rotors in front with six piston calipers complete with a fancy S8 logo on the side. Very cool. And then in the rear, 14 inch diameter rotors. Now, this car is fitted with an option, and just as a side, yes, we are going to play a round of the options game with this vehicle in a separate episode, and uh, it's going to be somewhat abbreviated, but we're still going to play the game. Anyway, this car is fitted with a sport exhaust, which is an option on the S8. Uh, two things about it. Number one, changes the exhaust tips. They're black instead of those like quad things you see on the new A8s. And number two, people, this is a car for heads of state, you know, people traveling to meetings to uh, determine the fate of basically un the unwashed masses. That exhaust makes this car sound sinister. So let's move down our driving dynamics checklist to really the most dynamic part, and that is the handling. It corners flat. And I'm gonna hit this weight thing again, 4,685 pounds. And notice what's happening here. I'm going at a pretty high rate of speed, and the car wants to offer you neutral handling. Yeah, there's a little bit of body roll, and yes, there are times you can completely overdrive the suspension setup, and that's really a function of where the engine is. You got the engine way the hell out front, because, I mean, after all, it's an Audi Quattro. Uh, so there is a tad bit of understeer when you get yourself into trouble, but that's the beauty of this setup. You can fix that and sort that out based on the power, uh, the balance in this mode, this dynamic mode, and frankly, some of your driving skills, because realistically, you shouldn't be driving a car like this this fast, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. Are any of you fans of Ben & Jerry's ice cream? Because if you are, you will love this interior. You see, for 2015, Audi has put on offer an entirely new color theme. It's called Vermont Brown. So this is special really for two reasons. Number one, very rich color. Number two, this specific car is fitted with a unique option, which we will cover in the options game, called design selection. So put aside the seats. Everywhere is leather. The top of the doors, the console, the top of the dash, even around the head-up display, and there's like double stitching around the head-up display to keep that leather together. Very nice touch. Then, look at the headliner. Not lowly suede, Alcantara. Even on the A, B, C pillar, and the visors. But wait, there's more. The shifter has a piano black finish. But really, the piece de resistance, look at the carbon fiber in the dash, and actually on the doors. It's not your run-of-the-mill, I have a Lexus LFA carbon fiber. It's got copper inlays. Overall, incredibly special. Like when people come and join you for a ride in this car, they're like, wow, this is something to behold. But really, there's only one problem with the interior of this car, and that is if you were to sit in the interior of a Mercedes-Benz S63. So that's coloring, and we talked a little bit about textures there, but I want to point out a couple more things about textures. Notice the steering wheel here. They do dress it up a little bit by uh, covering the horn button in leather with the double stitching, and then they do the stitching, the uh, contrasting stitching on the inside of the wheel, which is great, but I still want to see uh, a design change here on the wheel. Again, call me old fashioned, but I love that you've got this old school analog clock. But it's not just the clock. Notice the aluminum trim that goes throughout the dash, even on the top of the nav screen, and then on the door panels. It's there, it's kind of a design trick. The aluminum focuses your eye on the clock. Now while we're talking design, there's still one more point, and that is the stereo. And really what you're getting here is you're picking up on the design elements of this interior. So we talked about this aluminum, the speaker grills that are in the doors. There's two of them in the front doors. There's two, one in each B pillar. Very cool. The rear doors, and then they've got the speakers, but they're black uh, on the parcel shelf. And then the, the really, the, the ones you really want, the party trick of the tweeters that pop up. Been around for a while, but uh, it to me, it never gets old. So if we're doing the math correctly, that's the sum of all the parts. But here's the catch, the methodology. This interior is the reflection of the methodology of designing ultra-luxury car interiors 
for the past 50 years. So the only thing wrong with that is you look inside of a Mercedes-Benz S-Class and the methodology there is we're not looking at the methodology for the past 50 years. We're going to come up with something completely different. We're going to create the methodology for the next 50 years. So in summary, what do we got? Well, we've got an incredibly special car that is beautifully screwed together and a very fast executive sedan, but we also have a bit of an admission. Friends, if you know me, you know I'm a bit of a Lotus freak, but over the past year or so, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm becoming a bit of a Mercedes-Benz S63 freak, which means I need to recuse myself from this car. But it's not just me. If you were to take the sales numbers, and not just the Audi A8 and S8, but like the Audi, the BMW 7 Series, the Jaguar XJ, put them all into like a basket of sales numbers. The Mercedes-Benz S-Class sells rings around that combined basket of numbers. I don't know why. Maybe it's guys who like to rape and pillage economies, heads of state, or warlords that just want to turn up in an S-Class. Me, I look at this, it's not as dynamically designed as that S-Class. I mean, when we saw that thing in 2014, they changed the deck and then forget about the interior. Audi still does beautiful interiors, but that S63, or really just the S-Class in general, wow, now that's an interior. So that's one man's opinion, and actually the sales race of these cars too. But what do you guys think? Uh, you got a great car here. It's, you would be very proud to own it, which one would you buy? And I'm gonna put a little catch on this. You can't pick the S-Class. Would you buy the Audi S8, the Jaguar XJ, the BMW 7 Series? I'll even throw in the Lexus LS for good measure. Which one of those cars would you pick and why? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV all one word, Motoman TV all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, Auf Wiedersehen. So here's the script. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch one of our 350 other episodes. And most importantly, share us with your friends. You're only wasting half your life on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Moto Man TV, all one word. I don't care who you share us with. Share us with your enemies. Just give the gift of Moto Man.